Tommy Lee returns to Sunfest. Man psycho. Amid's growing feud with Alkaline. Oh, someone go like them no one give homage to the death of us. I was born a winner. High honor for the high priest of reggae. Memorial Weekend had us in three separate locations in the U.S. covering some of the biggest Jamaican-type events. Bala, 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 bala. And a rare interview with the Jenna boss, Idonia, after his big appearance at Best of the Best. All coming up right here on stage. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Winford Williams. We'll be right back. Bala, 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 bala. Bala, 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 bala. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. Memorial Weekend had us in three separate locations in the U.S. covering some of the biggest Jamaican type events. Memorial Weekend honors those who died in military service for the US. But for many living here, the commemoration is more festive than Samba. A wide variety of events across the 50 states reflecting the country's cultural diversity. With the Jamaican community being a core participant. Like this massive dancehall reggae event happening right now, downtown Miami. Best of the best. One of the three events that brought us here. The others being BRT Weekend out on the West Coast and the Palm Beach Jerk Festival north of where we're standing right now. An 11 year old staple of Memorial Weekend. Best, best of the best is the only surviving dancehall show of its size in the US. This staging on Sunday, May 28th had on its billing a wide cross section of that genre's most wanted. Pioneering icons Josie Wales, Brigadier Jerry, and Barrington Levy. 80s breakouts Mad Cobra and General Trees. New arrivals Massacre and Dexter Daps. <laughs> Ten-year veterans, I obtain. Idonia. Conchet. And Mavado. Patrice Roberts. Timeless Gems by Chris Martin. And a touch of spice. And you get a full to capacity Bayfront Park venue and a blistering dancehall party as act after act found favor with the massive crowd a party that was to be closed by no other than Mavado but time wouldn't allow the allotted time for the show had expired and the curfew effected just as the gully god was about to make his entry Boy, I went for a minute, so I have to tell everybody who come out. I deeply apologize on behalf of Jabba, Butterfuku, and Best of the Best. You know, so when we keep Best of the Best, we keep quality show. And we have a curfew, you understand? And then now, it reached to the point where Dexter Dabs hold up the show. As you can see, it was a long time set. And then after Dexter Dabs hold up the show, then we have a band change into Mavala time. And then the time reached to be 12 o'clock. So that was the problem that really happened and you have a curfew at 12 o'clock so the police come and say we have to lock it off. We don't keep false promotion and I'm so hurt because it's been so many years the people have been waiting for Gully God over four years now the Gully God never gets to perform for the best of the best. Apart from the apology is there any other redress anything you can say to the fans? Yeah man I just want to thank everybody for coming out I don't want to hold this against me we're going to make it up to you you know what I mean keep a, keep a free show I'll do back a show again for the Massive and Crew. So this is the day after Best of the Best and we're in the lobby of the Hilton Double Tree and guess what? You see for yourself. Do I have to say anything more? Who we're standing with? Well, she was one of the show takers last night. Spice, you're, 
your view on your own your own no yeah i'm dealing with it win for the year i'm dealing with the show me not afraid to say it yeah the show shall i did it again the yes. stage show boss the queen of the stage yeah they don't call me that for nothing you see it winning yeah <laughs> so where you go from here now where you doing? oh i'm all over you know i just came back from a successful european tour for six weeks so yes. i'm doing an american tour right now and i'm off to canada as well and i'm going to england in august my fully book so the sheet going nationwide no man the sheet i got everywhere <laughs> <laughs> look out for the sheet all right thank you this is why it's all good <laughs> Ah, thank Safe you so flight. much, Winnie. All, All right. right. <laughs> All right, so that's her. The spicy one of the dance hall. So Spogo is on camera, and I won't tell you what kind of camera he's on. <laughs> it's actually mine, my personal camera. So you can guess. And we're heading now for the Jerk Fest up north. West Palm Beach is where we're heading right now for the Jerk Fest. The onstage crew on tour in the U.S. And Jason is over, by, by the way, Jason is over on the West Coast, the BRT weekend. And he's now going to give us his report. The second stop in the BRT tour for 2017 takes us to the United States of America. And let me tell you something, if you think Jamaica is hot, think again. We are in the desert in a place called Palm Springs in California. Palm Springs or Cathedral City is located just around 100 miles away from the City of Angels, Los Angeles, but is quite the opposite from the busy streets and lively personality of that city, a very calm and generally relaxed environment. A lot of retired celebrities, basketballers, football players, you know what I'm saying, international sports players are in Palm Springs, Cathedral City because of golf. So this area is more of a retirement, laid-back vicinity. But the over 1,000 party-goers who made the trek to Palm Springs Everything were certainly not going into retirement nor laying back. In fact, it was quite the opposite. We decided that the mark in California, there's not many Caribbean parties like this. As a matter of fact, there's none. I'm having a great time. First time in Los Angeles. It's been amazing. So we said, why not bring BRG to California? I have a good time. Back to back partying over three days. On day one, a celebrity appearance and a performance from the countryman, Charlie Black. I up your body one more time. Charlie Black there for the first time in BRT weekend, so it's a good look. I don't know the entire team and stuff the family they are represented. See me a dancer, what they are doing, you know? Music nice, people nice. Hands down. I went to the desert party, I went to Globe. Ultimate vibes right now. Yo, you're not seeing mud? No, you can't see it. So I'm not even saying nothing but who not see it? You're on your mud! When I come to talk, I come to talk. Jesus Christ, if you never there, I want to miss something. Talk the truth, dog. Yeah, man, the vibe's crazy, man. Call it. Yo, BRT weekend. Kappa shot. Yo, tell it. I'm having a great time. Excellent weekend. You loving the BRT experience? I'm having a BRT. Yes. <laughs> Culminated the BRT celebrations officially, what always seems to churn out the most patrons, BRT all white. BRT vibes nice, Dominican Republic is nice, California nice, Atlantic City is nice, and Florida is nice. BRT all white, pick up everybody with you, on stage. Some people go in Las Vegas, some people go in Miami, you know what I mean? That's usually the big getaway for people. So to put BRT in California on a Memorial Weekend, it's a big gamble. And as you can see, the people came out. So overall, I can say it's fantastic. Atlantic City is next. Tickets are going crazy. That's where BRT is. People heard Atlantic City. You watch Boardwalk Empire, one of my favorite things ever. When it comes to TV, I had to do it there. The Palm Beach Jerk Festival is a family event that after 13 stagings is the pride and joy of Jamaicans living in the West Palm Beach area of Florida. Every year I look forward to it. The event is like, it's like a wow for me. We started this 14 years ago um, as basically a backyard party. We were hired as DJs and um, we did the party on Memorial Day. And um, then the following year we decided that um, there's nothing to do on the holiday itself. So we actually rented a park 
and um, allowed people to, to come to the um, event for free. So we did it free for three years and since then it has been growing consistently. There are a lot of us in these parts and they really came out today. You know? It's a good effort. Pulling fans of Jamaican food and music from all over, the Memorial Day Shinding is a must attend for thousands. This year's music package unfolded with first Wayne Wanda having his way with the ladies. Then half bind of loading and trancing. Boom shot after boom shot. kind of Caribbean people, even Caribbean people they don't know as immigrant and representing for them right now, it's still a form of strengthening and a confirmation. When we come to a place like this and see all the Caribbean I get together and I celebrate in a one arm and it's a pleasure. Followed by a blistering hybrid of dancehall and one drop by the agent. If they would only it's a nice vibe, it's always great to represent the music, um, especially in these uh, parts of the US where you have West Palm where you have surrounding communities and different towns spread far about in the South Florida. It's not just about Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Tantalizing closure came from Mr. Riley. Taros and Singy Singy. Riley. Well, if everybody half mind was here, you're a living legend. Agent Sasko, the lyrical machine, Wayne Wanda, one of my favorite singers. And what me like about that show, yeah, with no disrespect. There's less artists, so like you can perform a little more. Because sometimes the true fans don't get enough of them artists when so much art is there. Tell them about the new video that you have coming. All right, this one is called Down Down Low for the ladies, you know, because we don't want the ladies them way. Them start, them ways of starch, them Africa can move. So it's called Down Down Low. Send off girl a wine up in a dance. Look like they want some good romance. And I don't mind it. We like it. So watch Kella, why not go down, 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 Why not go down, 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 Watch Kella, why not go down, 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 So much of the show. All right, so that's our coverage of Memorial Weekend in the U.S. And a special shout out to all our fans, our legions of fans across the states. It was great seeing so many of you in the flesh. Stay with us right here on stage, a rare interview with Jenna Boss, Idonia, Tommy Lee booked and ready for Reggae Sun Fest. Amidst war with Alkaline and the high priest of Reggae gets high honor. All coming up, we'll be back. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week on stage. So much more than entertainment. Credited as one of the best performers at Best of the Best, we caught up with the fourth Jenna Boss after his performance backstage. I would call it a stinging performance by the Jenna Boss himself, Idonia, and we're we're privileged to ask some very important questions, sir. Yeah, Because yeah. many, many um, artists who have come in your generation and subsequently yeah. um, do not get a chance to come here and to perform for these people. Tonight you get to be here and, uh, wow, they, they really, really wanted to see yeah. you and they gave you the love. Yeah. How do you feel about the reception you received out there? Well, it's a great feeling, you know, you know because I've only been hard work been put in for over the years. So. Once you get them type of welcome, there's a great vibe, you see me? Mm -hmm. And that just gives your energy for God and, and, and be more energetic. So it's a great vibe and we have to just give thanks to Father God for making it possible because you know it all starts from this, you see me? So, it seems to me that it's the same kind of reception you get elsewhere in the US. Well, well definitely we get, you know, we get mixed crowds more time, you see me? Because like, like LA, you see me, that, that, that was a great vibe. When we go to Oakland now, you know, it's a more reggae vibe. So I'm more listening crowd and I have to just hold the stage and perform for them. You know, got Arlanda, be a girl. So you have to sing some whole heap of girls song. Atlanta was great. Mixed crowd, whole heap of male, whole heap of female. So everywhere have a, a different vibe, but it's it kind of similar in a, in a, in a sense. Because we just, we, just, we just keep the performance them. It's high energy. And you know, once, once, once you deliver, you know, the people are catching up on your vibe and things. So that's a great vibe. But we there, I give thanks, man. So for a long time you've been dubbed the most popular, most powerful underground artist. Yeah. And you were proud of it. Yeah. Where are you now? 
well, levels up. You see me? Yeah. Levels up because you know, like them days, they're like CDs and, and internet. Because, like, we, we are one of the first artists like who took it to like the internet. Because we never had to get a radio player and a whole heap of playing at the dance, you know. But we still had to keep it going. So we just burn a lot of CDs, like 2,000, 3,000 CDs a week. And just have we friend them, I give them out, and we are give them out, and just keep it bubbling, keep it on the internet, whole heap of freestyle, jump on the hip hop, reading them and thing and thing, and just keep the streets buzzing, you know. Mm -hmm. However, with the work over the years, you know, different, different pipelines and networks kind of kind of freed up you know and and and, and when we started getting like more radio play and and, and and more like play like in the dance you know a whole different level because i just said the real hit them start come with yeah it outside of jamaica you know you see me song like 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 jackie song like tip on your two boring girl and like whole lot more song you know start it like like worldwide not just like jamaica you know so once 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 we started getting like 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 that push i just level up you see me yeah because it seems to me that you're this is your big <laughs> your biggest moment this yeah. time appears to be yours so so tell us how it feels and uh and what would you say to others who are looking on and and what are some of the disciplines and so on that you had to uh, um employ to make, yeah. to make this possible well it's a great vibe you know as me tell it's a great feeling you know you see me because any man we have put out the work it must some sort of results you see me and like the reception we get like me over the last two three years kind of different you see me it's a great vibe and thing and we just work harder you know me just challenge myself every day me always try to be creative try to be versatile you know I always try to do when i go on in a dance hall because you know in a dance hall it's like it's like every man follow a training you know? so it work you know what's hot everybody try find a way if you put it in a fit them way yeah. and me not do them thing they may always try stand out me not fit in because once you stand out your work i go show different and it i got it you know so we just always challenge yourself you see me stay creative you see me stay working at the studio we not sing anything will come to a mind or anything will come to a mouth to try to find the real thing them to say for connect and stay with the people because if you check like my music over the years you see me have a catalog of hit songs not just popular songs are our are, are favorites you see me from like 2015 you now we have a string of like maybe 30 40 solid hit songs you know so i just the creativity and is a god given talent so i forgive father thanks all the while you see me because he blessed me with it and so that versatility it appears is what keeps your keeps your your fan base loyal well definitely because it seems to me that anywhere you go they're with you <laughs> you've carried people for 10 or more years with you yeah. and you're building and winning new ones well the more international <laughs> you get you seem to be winning more and and broadening and even when we're not hearing you a lot we're yeah. hearing people talking about you and saying i don't know i don't know so so, so <laughs> it you, you you versatility yes but versatility. there's some Sum it up for me. The yeah. versatility is there, but the sound, the sound, the sound is, is important the flow, because the, the flow, the delivery, the sound is it because my sound kind of, kind of, kind of is a '90s sound fused with like a lot of different types of music because mm -hmm. growing up we listen to a dance hall, whole heap of rap music, every little music we listen and, 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 and things so I kind of have a unique sound because we love the big voice artists them like from, from back then, the baby sham them, the, 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 the shabarangs, all of them big voice that we study and, 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 and we learn from a lot of great artists and we just take it and put it in our little way and mix it and blend it so there's a sound where the people them always say them love, them love how we sound and records and we sound the same way we sound on record and stage because that is important. Alright, so you have a big assignment in Japan. Or so some of, some of us feel, sir, because maybe bigger things go on, or yeah. to go on. But some things <laughs> sounds like a big to me. How does it sound to you? Very big, you see me? Because, you know, growing up, some first thing, you know, the show them we grew up on as youth, and some first is an international show. The world, I watch what go on as some first, you see me? That has a lot to do with what heap of bookings and, and, and what heap of some features and some new markets where your music start playing. So, some first is a, is a, is a big show, and you always have to try to put your best foot forward. So, you know, so we're not performing at Jamaica for a little while and even the countryside. So, you know, say, don't I'm be a now, and I'm not normal, nothing. When we run out, they say, you see, the energy tonight are like two, three times that. Because Jamaica will play, so you know, if you represent a yard, because the world are watching, you know, Jenna Sydney, you know, you see me? Treat. So, what else in, in the pipeline? Ah, well, a lot right now, you know. You see me, we have Europe in August, you see me? We have a couple of music videos right now, you know, um, um, we're going to shoot them like a week and a half from now, starting there, you see me? Banger, you see me? Um, a song called IG Girls, you see me? A song called Better. Is it me? Otherwise, some that new singles I start release some like next week for like the summer. We have like maybe ten songs we want to put together for like the summer season. Party music, you know, something for the girl them wind them waist, you know, some different type of thing. Cause they don't say we start the year and have the street certain way we sang like bang on, work it and them songs. So we just a target of more fun, you know, party like summer. So 
I just want to leave work and the people can look out and watch out because we don't stop it. You know. A bag of things, you know. You see me? And, and it seems to me that you are the most married, <laughs> the most married, settled, um, stable dance hall. Yeah. Uh, rude boy, and at the same yeah. time you're able to maintain your yeah. rude boy, bad boy image. How do you balance all of well, that? Everybody, Family, kid, yeah. wife and all of that. Well, everybody know we're from the streets from ever since, you know, and they know that, yeah, the type of person we is and thing, but I grow up in a man, you mm -hmm. see me, and, and, and you know, so we're there for, for years now, and, and, and you, you need more stability in your life, you see me, you need, you need more reason, you need more purpose. You know, so when, when my son goes to boom and born, I start looking at life different, I start looking at life through film eyes and say, Diddy, you know, you have to change things and fix things for him. You see me? Me and my fiance have been together like for like years, over eight years, nine years, you see me? So we just say, yo, at the next step, you know, and I do some different type of blessing, because when, 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 when you're settled and you're focused and, 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 and you're stable, you see me? I do some different type of blessing, and that helps with my music also, you see me? Because we are live up and I live life on some different levels. So it's a great vibe and, and we love it, you see me? Family life and music, that's how I live. We do nothing else. You know. All right, I want to ask you about rivalry. I, it's whatever you want to yeah. say, because I don't want to sit here and pretend that there's not that elephant in the room. Yeah. I don't ta ask you about it. What's your whole, own call what, about what, what, what you want What's your whole pre, you know? Like, like there's no rivalry, you know. You see me? Because you don't say we've been there on a different level. Like from 2005, we we'll get the break and. We they are do it's pan tapa, it's pan tapa, it's pan tapa. It's only for artists from 2005 till now. You see me? Them gone and, and you can't find them and them now have no hit song, you see me? And right now we they on a different level, you see me? And, 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 and Jamaica and the world needs to see that, you see me? So did it, we they on a different level, dog. We they on a little boy level, than a little picnic level, you see me? We are general in the music, you see me? A whole heap of youth look up to, a whole heap of youth pattern, we a whole heap of youth learn from, we. you see me? Over the years, you see me? I have more than 30, 40 hits under my belt. It's no popular songs, you see me? So at times the people, the fans, them for just be fair and square and know, say, yo, a different level did it depend, man, you see me? Different level, some little man who want to do them things, them for go find some little man and, and find some basic school type of thing or some elementary type of thing, <laughs> you see me? Yeah, because I graduated from high school, college and all of this, I depend like a different level, it's like I'm the professor right now. Jamaican kind of people them know too, but you know them, you know Jamaican people, you know them love, them just love certain things more time and just love a vibe and thing and thing, you see me? Bang a job from November, you know man, and I still one of the artists, if not the artist, sang in a dance hall worldwide. So it just goes to show, man, level up. Yeah, man, a, a big people things, man, right. you see me? Because if you go out there and see a big man a beat up a little boy, you're going to see a wickedness, you know? Yeah. You're not going to say a wickedness. Yeah, if you see a big man a beat up a little boy, you're going to say him wicked, a little youth, and him know say a little youth. Yeah. Love him, so. <laughs> no, I'll do that, man. Right. Yeah, well, we're going to speak that beer, yeah, that. Say, so, you know, you're a big man about the yeah. thing. Well, sir, we can only wish you the, the best and thank look forward to yeah. some of more, the good things to come. And thank I'm, you I'm very looking, much. Personally, looking forward to the something. Uh, respect to the fullest and I'm big up on stage in the cars and all your support and build I don't know over the years and put me on that, that, that platform there. So that shows that we are holding for my career too over the years and I have to give thanks and big enough to one thing because the world has seen uh, on stage, you know. Is it? I'm not thinking so big up yourself, man. Fullest. All right, there you have him. The Fort Jenner boss himself. Still to come right here on stage, Uncle Demon Tommy Lee. And later, the High Priest of Reggae. I know I am. Yes, I am. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage. So much more than entertainment. When Tommy Lee made his debut at Reggae Sunfest in 2012 as a solo act, he was the most anticipated on dance all night. He was the first ever Montegonian dance hall breakout artist to garner such a reception. But a year later, controversy surrounding his brand, which carried the moniker Uncle Demon, had a negative impact on Lee's return to Reggae Sunfest, but only as far as anticipation went. For it was on that dance all night that Tommy Lee exhibited the kind of stagecraft that placed him a cut above his generation, affirming the Shook DJ as a proper entertainer. However, legal woes, including a charge for breaches under the anti lotteries Act, led to the banning of Tommy Lee from stage shows, including 
Reggae Sumfest in 2015. Since then, Lee has only been making cameo appearances across the island. But if the kind of responses he has been getting are anything to go by, the banning has done more good than harm. Explosive forwards every time the demon touches a stage. Tommy Lee is booked to make what is expected to be a triumphant return to Reggae Sumfest this July and is on our stage right now to tell us whether it's a change in the fortunes of Uncle Demon. Demon, sir. Blessed love. Welcome. So, sir, okay, first of all, you need to talk about um, the Magnum appearance that you were supposed to have made and it didn't happen. I just don't know if people know it wasn't Magnum fault or anything, you know? Okay. I don't know, respect the Magnum same way if you have me up on a show, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, but the cops, them know, I don't know any problem. They must say I can't work, you know? Them tell the promoter so he can't work on one bag of thing. So did they give an explanation? Not really. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't see sense. It's because I thought this was a change um, as far as your legal issues were concerned, that you were now turning the corner on that. So that's not yeah, the case. Yeah, but everything all right. I'm sure I'm going to work for my day, but I don't know how I can work for my day. I don't know. I bet even the commission. I don't think I know about them things. I right know I have them stop. $22 million worth of show for me already. You know. Oh. And I'll pay some in million. Jamaica? Yeah, in a Jamaica. $22 million dollars you have lost as a result of the banning. Yeah, yeah. $22 million worth of show. I have to give up beer money and beer thing. So I want to pass it, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm a lawyer. Mr. Ernest Smith. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull out a lawsuit from them and all them with it. Mm -hmm. Because there's no clear explanation as to why, is it? Mm -hmm. Because you have not been convicted or anything like that. I don't like who they do this, doesn't it? Me, me feel the same way how they feel about me. You know what I mean? So your family is suffering as a result of this? I say suffering, but things could have better if I never them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right, so you're booked to return to Reggae Sunfest, your hometown in Montego Bay. How, what's the energy down there? What's the vibe on? in Montego Bay at the moment about your return to Sunfest. I don't want to be able to move on soon and everybody glad to see me and things, isn't it? Yeah, man, a crazy thing, man. This year, Sunfest go crazy. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, man, I'm give them a good performance. A long time, I'm not performing a full set for the fans of in Montego Bay, you know what I mean? Yes, yeah, so, yes, talk about your performance, your stagecraft, because look at you. You see how calm you are on the set, right? Mm -hmm. You're very calm when you speak. And you're always very laid back and so on. But when you go up on that stage, what happened? Why that the <laughs> demon in you jump out by <laughs> the whole crowd? I don't want to understand how this. Man, you know, it just come natural, you know. Hey, yeah. the demon jump out. <laughs> <laughs> they are comparing it all the others who came in your time and are saying, what they lack is what you have. Do you see it that way? What is the key to your uh, um, stagecraft? Okay, I just be myself and I just perform, work with the energy of people. Let out that energy and get it back, you know what I mean? So it's natural with you? You didn't mm -hmm. take time out to, to practice and to look no, at no, nothing and copy nothing, by. get inspired by anyone? Practice come by just doing shows every day, you know? So it's, it's, yeah. it, it came natural? I'm going to practice with it. See, like when a little bit of people may perform for them, that's when I start practice, you know? When you look at your compatriots, the guys who came in your generation, and what do they lack, in your view? What are they doing wrong? Well, what do they need my to do different? They're still young, you know? So, time will make them perform a little better still, isn't it? Some yeah. of them now perform good, but time will make them perform good. You, you're giving them time? Yeah. They will eventually get it? Yeah. Some of them sing them sing for the heart of tune and catch this high pitch, and then when they go up on the stage, they push, you know what I mean? Okay. They can't catch the same pitch. Mm -hmm. mm, let me tell you, it's true. The man that try to hold me back, mm -hmm. try to hold me down all the time, so it just give me more energy, you know? So oh. the man that hold me, hold me back, if far, them hold me back, when they let me go far, I'm not going to understand. 
So the people them just want to see me, you know, me that my man to go nowhere and things. So me as at the start them thing. Them. When people see me them sugar, you know, <laughs> them have this feeling, you know what I'm mean? saying? So you think you take away yourself kind of? Mm -hmm. You scare up yourself? Yeah, because I'm trying to make me scare so I just work with it and just take it as an advantage, you know what I mean? So, so what we're seeing on stage is spent up energy then? Mm -hmm. You just like reserve all that energy and just let it out on a stage when you get up? Mm -hmm. I'm performing the same way, it's just a perfect package. Tamil is a perfect package, you know? Yes. Like, Tamil is Sparta, it's a perfect package as an artist, you know what I mean? I'm singing all type of song. I can do all type of shows, same way. I have no good, bad, and ugly song, you know what I mean? And all of that will be on display at some fest. Mm -hmm. All right, so talk about now the, you've, been, <laughs> you've been throwing jabs at Alkaline for a while, and he wasn't answering. This is my reading of it. And then all of a sudden, he's answering, he's answered. Why were you jeering him? I feel him know what I'm doing you know, at the end of the day, and I'm not talking about energy and you know, everything. You know? But I'm not a big artist, too, you know. I come from the Gaza bloodline, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm fans, I'm different from Alkaline fans. Alkaline just hot to have everybody fans. I mm -hmm. have more fans than Alkaline. I'm a big artist for Alkaline. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I almost a one and a half passport I've done already, you know. I've got more places in the world than Alkaline. I don't see what Alkaline do, what I do. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how much I have to say I'm like an artist. But I have a song from Grand Theft Auto that sells one billion in a one day. So do you, do you think if you, weren't, um, if you weren't banned from traveling and from really moving your career forward, you would have been bigger than him? You would have been hotter than him? Because you, you, you agree that he's hot, right? Mm -hmm. So you would have been hotter now than him, you think? I mean, I me think, I'm not saying, you know, have a thing when you bust, you're hot, you steam down. Mm -hmm. That's when reality comes to everybody, when he's a good artist or not. Yes. Because if you steam down now, you know, say, there's no coming back or, you know, you're lost, you know, say, you're not a good artist. But in one type of circumstances, I think when kind of depend on level what he is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but, but you, he wasn't... <laughs> He wasn't throwing. He wasn't throwing any words at you. Why did you feel the need to? Cause you, st you, and, uh, you start. No, no, man. He throw words at him enough time, man. Isn't it? Him, so when you talk, is resp you're responding to him or? I respond. I respond all the time. You know? All the time. It wasn't yeah, you just, who you were. Sub him in a message and them thing there, isn't it? Uh -huh. I mean, feel that I'm not really saying I'm putting career at risk, but I didn't name my name, you know, and got no risk. So I'm sending yeah, out coded group. messages? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sending out subliminal messages, you say? Yeah, right? yeah. And you read them to be coming after you? That's your reading of these messages? Or it could mean otherwise from what you believe they mean? People know what I want, man, and people are listening. I'm pretty fun, so many people are listening to dance and music. They know everything I want. They even hear more things than me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Would you ag agree that he's doing well? I'm not saying that. I'm not going good, man. I'm not doing anything. Okay. Is there no peace between you and the, the warlord? Your, peace your, your always grandfather? Do that. <laughs> peace always is there. Bounty am I. Bounty am one of the best characters in a dance hall, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Bounty character is serious. And he make a laugh, see you. Know, if you just act like Bunty, you're, you're dead, you have to jump on your back. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, that Bunty, we respect him in every way. You know what I mean? Uh, if I had Bunty, thing, I just a little you know? Tom, Tom, you know what I mean? I'm not an artist, you know, I just think true and defend myself, you know what I mean? I'm a big grown artist you now, I'm in a business. How much here? Seven years now. Yeah. I feel like this, any artist, I'm on him, this thing. I miss something I'm like, I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk now, because I'm growing in the business, isn't mm -hmm. it? Long time I'm there now, isn't it? Where, t tell me where the cases are, and what do you think is going to happen in, say, the next 12 months for you? I'm going to soon finish now, isn't it? Oh, it's one case? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, to, and you say it's soon finished this year? It will yeah. be finished this year? This year, two years you now. Somewhere it's three years. Mm -hmm. And then what is going to happen when it's got, when it's bad? I, it, clearly you're anticipating that you'll be freed up and, and you will not be. I'm going to go do some collab and, you know, mm -hmm. go can buy my ticket, go to put out some work and, you know. Every day people come from America, England, Canada, you know, all about. Eh? Mm -hmm. For booking, for wanting you to come yeah, and perform for them? 
Yeah. And fans reaching out but to you. But I said, I can't go anymore. That's how I'm going to finish. So you're, not, you're free to travel now, but you just don't do it because you don't want any issues? You want everything to be yeah, so, I want resolved? Yeah, everything to finish first. Oh. I'm going to start traveling. You know what I mean? But I'm going to go Ireland. I'm going to go, um, you know, um, I'm going to go Europe, same way, isn't it? Well, so what's what are you sitting on in terms of recordings now? What what's what are you not? I know I just drop a diamond blessing EP. Mm -hmm. Now my next EP I drop an album. I am doing one for work since then. Isn't it? So I mix it EP the next EP I mix it now. Isn't it? With be a new track. Isn't it? Diamond mm -hmm. blessing is a EP with about nine track. Where I just bring back everything. All of the songs I'm drop for the you know what I mean? Saying? Yeah, so the next EP, you know, everything fresh, man, that the album, everything fresh, same, you know what I mean? Ah, bless up. Well, Demon, as usual, in you know, we always, we always want to have you on our stage and talk to you. Um, you're a man who just, you call it as it is. As you say, you know, I don't know why, you just talk where you have to talk, a dance hall is what it is. Mm, free speech. A free, <laughs> free speech. But, boy, I can't, I can't wait for Monty to be in that performance, Reggie, because... Yeah, man, in time, man, in time, I touch something, because it's a different <laughs> thing, man. Long time, I don't perform down there, you know, man, so... You know, forgive me. Bomb performance, you know, man, isn't it? See? Well, mm -hmm. we're looking forward to it, Reggie. Blessed love. All right, so there you have him right here on stage. The demon of the dance hall. <laughs> Stay with us, still to come. High Priest gets high, very, very high honor in reggae. And that's next. Push comes to shove. Everybody's gonna put the blame, the blame on me for love. Reaching more and more screens around the world every week. On stage, so much more than entertainment. Welcome back. Making his debut at age seven. His relevance in reggae spans the existence of the music itself. Over five decades of contributions, including timeless gems like these. Push comes to shove. Everybody's gonna put the blame, the blame on me. An outstanding body of work for which he was honored on May 25th by the prestigious Institute of Jamaica's annual Musgrave Awards with a silver medal. We're talking about the high priest of reggae, Freddie McGregor, our very special guest right now, right here on stage. Sir, congratulations, sir. Thank you, sir. One million of them. One million of them, <laughs> Freddie. First of all, to start by telling us, how did you come by the name High Priest of Reggae? High Priest. You know, you know I think it's Copeland give me that name, eh? Right? Mm -hmm. Copeland Farbs. Copeland. I think Copeland's give me that name, then, and start calling me. Well, I'm Priest. Uh -huh. Well, Dennis Brown call me priest, but not high priest. Okay. But I think Copeland added the high priest. The high priest to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Dennis, back, back, back in yeah, the day. Yeah, because Dennis called me priest. Um, priest, the relevance of it is being yes. a Levite. Okay. Third son of Jacob. Oh. Joseph. And, you it's know, biblical. you have Reuben, Simeon, know. Levite. Yes. Um, Judah, Isaac, Charles, Zebulon, Dan, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Joseph, Benjamin, of which Dennis is a Joseph. So we relate to each other by our tribe name. So we call him Jojo as Joseph. Okay. And him call him a priest as Levi. And Copeland Forbes had a high priest. Had a high priest. <laughs> <laughs> he had an idea of what was going on. So he just had the high priest part to it. Okay. And so, and we just lost uh, Frankie, Frankie Paul. Frankie Paul, of course. Our condolences goes out to his family. Absolutely. A big, a major, major voice major and talent. Major part. Major part of our music industry. Anyone who loves reggae, would know Frankie Paul and know Frankie Paul's body of work. Mm -hmm. um, back in the early dance hall era, Frankie Paul was the man. Mm -hmm. I remember once I had a concert in Maypen called Superstars Extravaganza. Yes. Frankie had a song called Sarah at the time and didn't come to Jamaica for a couple of years. And we got him to come to Maypen for that show with Dennis Brown, Coco T, Barrington, Levy, Colin Davis, Tomlins, a whole host of us, and Junior Rito. And we even have a video of the event. And that was always a memorable event in my mind because Frankie had just come back to Jamaica with mm. a slew of hit songs. Yes. So Frankie is definitely one of the cornerstones 
of our dancehall community. Absolutely. And wasn't he the first big voice like yours and oh, the yeah. others it to go the... dancehall? Oh, yes. At oh, the yes. turn of the year, because he bust us a dancehall Frank singing him, on some Well, system. if you notice, I say one of our biggest dancehall artists. Yes. Because alongside people like Sugar Miner. Y you should say that again, Freddie, because when you say <laughs> Frankie Paul is a dancehall artist, kids well, listening don't understand that singers like him, well, people especially like myself, veterans. I refer to Frankie as Frankie Dancehall Master. Dancehall, yeah, the dancehall That's Paul. That's what we call yes. him, and Frankie loved that, because Frankie knows. That his dancehall is, dance is his roots, yes. yes. Of course. That such was dancehall But so back versatile then. that yes. he could use just about any song and turn it around in whichever way. Because if you listen to a lot of Frankie's dancehall tracks, which are even cover songs, yes. and the way he flips them into a dancehall piece, it's amazing. But that was the nature of dancehall back then, though, no, Exactly, because... and that was a nice thing about dancehall. Ah. I know the score. I know. That's oh, all demanding oh, big boys you back don't get then. It better. Live. Yeah, man. Live yeah. on the sound system. Josie and Charlie are chat. See I chat up the mic. Briggy, Frankie are sing, Sugar upon the other side. And that's that's how we grew up, really. Yeah, that, that's the melody and, and the richness of the music was and, still preserved, and, and even magic, at the dance hall level. That was the magic within dance hall. Okay, so to, to talk about what does this honor by the, the Musgrave Awards. Um, what does it mean to you? Um, it means a lot. Um, I'm really humbled by it, mm. firstly, and I'm really appreciative of the fact that I was considered for it. Because sometimes you just do your work and your work, and you, you don't know what's in the background. You don't know what's coming. But when I got the letter, I was in Europe. We were on tour in Italy, and um, my daughter called me and told me there was a letter from the Institute. I wasn't mm. even sure what that was about. And she kind of read it to me and I said, yeah, OK. But it never sunk in until the following day. I mean, I said, well, on, must be a word. It's a serious thing. No, I serious. So I went back to it and called her and asked her to read me the entire letter, and she did. And so I, I replied to her and tell her, tell, tell the committee mm -hmm. I would be in Jamaica at that time and I will make myself available. And um, I was really impressed, blown away, humbled, everything in a one. And then the fact that this happens in Jamaica mm -hmm. just put the icing on the cake. And Right on the heels of that, the announcement that your song, the winner, a winner, no. will be the song used to, to, for Bull's last performance. What we know, 2017? <laughs> yes. You know, says a good year for me. Oh, you mean? Pure good things happen yeah, this year. <laughs> and Barry Clark, our merchandise person, called me and said, yo, you, you, you watch the TV look while I said, no, what I want. I said, yo, I'm going to use your song enough for Bull thing, you know. I was born a winner, and I'm like, do doing what with it? And they start to explain the concept to me. I'm like, whoa. Uh, how will it be used? Tell me about the use. Yeah. Um, the concept, as I, I've learned it, is um, when he pulls up at the National Stadium, mm. to come out of his vehicle, they'll be playing using Dennis Brown's, here I come. Don't so this is bold. Right. Mm -hmm. Arrive. And, yeah. and then when he's walking into the stadium, I think that's the time they play, I was born a winner. Mm. So that is special, and it makes me want to be there, and um, I, I, will, I will be there. <laughs> I want to experience, not only for that reason, but to see Bolt's last performance oh, in yes. Jamaica. Because remember when Bolt had run abroad, I would just go to halfway tree or wherever, watch it on the big screen. Now this is our national hero, mm -hmm. and the world's fastest person who come from this place in Jamaica. So for his last performance, I make foreign come. Yes. Come see that me live at Jamaica and I say, that's not possible. But you see, so it, you see what is also significant here, Freddie, is that they go to the, the foundation, mm -hmm. yourself, it Dennis is. Brown, <laughs> to find songs appropriate enough that everybody can relate to. To the team who come up with that idea. For this. Because I think it is very appropriate uh, for Bolt himself. And speaking of great music, sir, New York City. So the, the, oh, <laughs> the after this continue, the greatness <laughs> continue for you. The real year here, Freddie McGregor. This big reggae symphony. You've oh done it before. You're, you're a veteran in the reggae <laughs> symphony business. I've done it quite a few times. But you, this will be a first. An, yes. An outdoor venue. Very first time. And um, mm. a lot of people are kind of wondering yes. how this is going to be. A lot of people are very excited because they have an idea what is going to happen. But I would just say to people, if, if you ask someone to tell you uh, the Monday after mm. the show, it can never be the same as being there. Yes. So you, you want to make sure you are there to witness this. I mean, I'm reading some stuff online. A lady in England say, 
I work, but I'm getting the time off and I'm flying to New York for the show because I don't know if this package will ever come to England again. Yes, that's true. Maybe mm -hmm. I kind of get goosebumps too. Because like she said, boy, I don't want them dead off. And mm, that's <laughs> right. I'm going to get to see them again. Yeah, well, yeah, Look that's, frightening. That's, yeah. But it is a reality. It's a reality. For many listening, they're wondering what we're talking about here. And I, I need you to explain it for me. The very first one happened The first in one happened in London at the Amasimit mm -hmm. um, Apollo. That was programmed around John Holt. Mm -hmm. And I tell people all the time, John Holt is one of the biggest artists we've had out of this country, apart from Bob Marley. Mm -hmm. In the UK, Bob, um, John Holt could be knighted as Sir John Holt. Mm -hmm. That's the magnitude and power of that artist there. And so the event was planned around his album, 1000 Volts of Holt. Mm -hmm. Which was done by the BBC, was recorded. Yes, was recorded in England with full orchestra. Yes. And so they wanted to replicate that, that, that program. Mm -hmm. And so I was called in as both part of the um, production team Okay. And to be on the, the show. Mm -hmm. So I spent um, quite a few months in London at that time, along with Linda, the lady who organized it and helped to put everything together. We got light parks for it, we put all the bits and pieces in place, and we presented the event. And it was still, to me, the most spectacular event in London. I wasn't there to see Bob Marley at the Lyceum. Mm -hmm. But what I know of this event, it stands out as one of the best events in mm -hmm. London, even to today. So I thought after that event, we need to do this. Yes. We, we need to continue doing this. And I called John and said, yo, let's do this. And I said, yeah, man, go ahead, let's do it. So we've done it twice at the Broward Center for the Performing Arts. In Florida. In, in we were Broward, there Florida. at one of them. We were there right. for that. And excellent. Mm -hmm. And um, I took it to New York as well mm -hmm. at the Brooklyn College. Oh, it did, so it's not the first and, day and here. No, and we, no, but that was indoor at indoor, the yes, College. Uh, yes. But we got the same response that we did in Florida. Mm -hmm. People turned out for it early evening, nice evening, clothes, tuxedos, whatever, and it was excellent. Oh, ex explain the elements of the presentation for us, because again, reggae and symphony, it, it, it needs to be explained a little more for me. Um, so it's okay, so orchestra. It's, it's going to be the Light Parks and We The People Band. Mm -hmm. So we're keeping it grassroots. Yes. The basic of it is grassroots. Um, added to that is a 17 piece, um, orchestra, mm -hmm. with cellos, strings, oboe, harp, and all the nice things mm -hmm. to help enhance the music in the way we want to for the people. Because it's the same songs, you know. Mm -hmm. Leroy still will drop fatty fatty. Mm -hmm. It's the same fatty fatty and mash up the place. Okay. But we make it more interesting mm -hmm. by doing with some the strings things and with the, it, yes. the other things. Yes. And um, that's part of it. We also have a choir. Mm -hmm. um, it's called the Lennox Road Baptist Choir. And um, they are going to be joining us on stage too, because we're doing a gospel segment. Like each of us, the artists, with the exception of Dadurai, will be doing a gospel song. Because every year, people, the gospel community in New York, kind of ask the promoter mm -hmm. what happened. And so he, the promoter himself is trying to cater to everyone, yes. which I think is a good thing. Oh, yes. Hence the reason there is Busy, No on the Bill, and there is Taros. Well, I think they are two of the best artists from that generation to be on the bill mm -hmm. because they too have a young following which we also want in the park that evening and great catalogs to, and great catalogs so for a total experience okay. so, mm -hmm. and then we have the right honorable R. Kelly. <laughs> so. Kelly, R. Kelly, and Stephanie Mills, I'm told. And Stephanie Mills added. She's added, yes. Oh my goodness. So I tell the promoter, I don't know how you're going to do it, but please prepare to fix 30,000 people in that park. Well, they busted, I think, 25 last year. Yeah, so I'm saying to him, yes, absolutely, with absolutely certainty, you're getting over 30,000 people. If I may give away just a little uh, have it here. Mm. It's like after each artist's performance um, for the closing, they'll bring out the choir to do uh, a special song, closing oh, I got song. Ah. So the choir is going to be out there with the artists blazing away. Um, I'm closing the event, so my final number, after my final number with the, the choir, then may have the ending song, the big grand finale, where everybody will be back on stage, including Taros and Busy and all of us. Ah. So it's that kind of climax. And I couldn't get a better birthday present, could I? No, uh, oh, yeah, it's a birthday. Two days after. Oh, wow. I'll be grooving. <laughs> oh, boy, pretty. I, the year, the, the Grammy couldn't do more for you, boy. This is, for real? No, this is. A, I, I, and, my, this is and my Musgrave yes. just represent my, my Grammy. 
Same. I'm going to get it at Jamaica. So I'm going to wow. great. Well, Reggie, thanks for coming and sharing with us, sir. Thank we look forward too. to the big day. Yes, sir. June, June 25, 25th, New York Sunday. City, Raw Wilkins Park. Okay, and so there you have him, our very special guest in this segment, Musgrave honoree, the high priest of reggae, <laughs> Freddie McGregor. <laughs> Thank you, Winnie. So, on stage. Up. Oh. Uh, on behalf of all of us, Winford Williams, thanking you for joining us. Do join us again next week for more on stage. I'm not longing to see you. I wanna know how you've been doing over in the Apollo. Oh, na, na, na. I'm gonna catch the slide. I'm gonna reach my destination. Hope you'll be smiling and longing to see you. Thanks for watching our video. If you're not yet a subscriber, click now and be on stage always.